Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to be installing some uh, engine bars that I got from uh, Rev Performance. Uh, they're black engine bars that's going to go right over this. It uh, doubles as front side frame sliders. And um, I'm pretty excited about this because I uh, want to protect my bike. So, uh, alright, let's get started. So the parts come shipped like this. On that side we've got uh, the engine bars. They're actually separately um, bubble wrapped. And um, this is the actual part number. Now you take a look, it's not actually originally created for a GPZ 500 and um, I'm currently installing it into a 2007 Ninja 500R. So this is what it looks like before it gets installed. You get um, two engine bars like that and a instruction packet along with all the brackets in the back and screws. First thing I'll have to do is uh, remove the belly pan, and uh, for that, once again, I have it on the center stand, which is one of the things I really love about the Ninja. So, uh, I'm gonna get started. Now, there is a small little deviation right here with this one bolt. It seems like this bolt protrudes out a little bit further. I'm going to see whether or not it's going to be able to just lock in there. So it seems like this part right here is being stopped. By a bolt that's a little bit large right here. This side here however, because of the kickstand, it doesn't... The location of the screw of the kickstand is slightly different. So I think that if actually if I had a earlier model kickstand it would be fine but now it would have to just rest on top of there like that and I guess if it was really tight it looks like it can still be very tight against the frame it will be fine but I'd really have to take a look because I don't know how the fairing would match up now so let's go ahead and put the fairing back on and take a look. Once again even though it's suboptimal it does get protected by the fairing so it doesn't look bad but I really need to see whether or not it's worthwhile to do it like that Now you notice the placement of the brackets. It's just the nature of it. Um, where it ends up, it's actually very hard to uh, get any kind of a, a pair of pliers back there in order to hold your nut. And even right here you can see it's actually very difficult to maneuver around this in order to get there. So it's definitely one of those things that you um, need to be aware of and uh, just make sure you have the right tools. So here I've gotten the uh, first side kind of bolted down and even though the bottom here isn't fully isn't bolted down um, it's just super sturdy. I'm gonna have a real tough time believing that this is gonna come apart at all. Okay so we're done with this side too and once again the bars are extremely strong even with no fastener down here. You can't shift it any which way direction and you could probably pick up the bike right from this so all in all, I think we did a pretty good job. Let's get the fairing back on. Okay, so the fairing's back on, and we can see here, this is what the engine bar looks like. So from the back, this is how much clearance that you have. One of the things I do like about the black is that it just kind of blends right into the bike. I, I don't think, in, instead of a frame slider, which I had to cut into the fairing, this kind of just protects the lower fairing as well as the engine. So despite the fact that the... Uh, engine bars didn't fit perfectly that like I, I had hoped. Um, I don't think it really mattered in the end. Uh, Steve and I just tried lifting the entire bike by the engine bars and you can easily do that. It's uh, strong as hell and really I don't think it'll move. It's covered by the fairings so um, the part that doesn't latch in perfectly is covered and I'm happy because I didn't have to drill into my fairing. 